Hi everyone, so I have the great pleasure of showing you this new auto ship that Diamond Press has brought to HSN. Super cute. This one's called Say Cheese, but um, there are different auto ships for like the seasons that have a similar feel, but um, for today it's a typewriter and like a Polaroid camera that has some interactivity, guys. It's super cute. So um, hopefully you've seen the previews or you know, you'll watch the presentation there on um, HSN because that way you'll see the different iterations of what's coming up after this initial one. Super cute. Um, I believe there's a Halloween set. I know there's a Christmas set. Um, maybe if I recall, I'll pull it up on my phone, but, you know, it's kind of hard to see because it's small anyway. But uh, definitely check out the um, demos. I will say these items were sent free of charge for my review. Of course, all opinions are my own. And any links down in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission for your purchase items to those links. These just hit the site, so it might not be in the little shopping bag here, but it'll definitely be in the description box, okay, guys? Because it does take a while to populate that little shopping bag. So uh, the link for this particular item may not be there yet, but it will be in the description box, okay? Um, so thanks for using those if you would like to. And you guys, I mean... <laughs> It's just super cute. So I love typewriters. I have Polaroids. I love them. I have the old school one. It's just right up my alley. Um, let me show you what it does, and then we'll go from there. I was thinking there was something else I wanted to chat about right quick, but uh, yeah. If I remember, I will bring it back up. Let me open up all the info sheets here, and this one has steps, not page numbers. So let's see. Okay. <clears throat> So this is what you're looking at. It's like a little pull tab. And like this one says, you know, you're like this typewriter and then when you pull it down vintage and cool. Or like this one over here, you have, you know, I miss your face. It says say cheese and you pull it. Maybe you have a picture in there. That's really cute. I'm um, using it in that way. But of course you have sentiments you can pop in there instead of images or however. So you have the card front. Of course that's included. Um, I was showing you here that you're going to need it to have it one way or the other depending on what you want to do with the, your card, you know, how you want to use it, the orientation, your card base, your pull tabs, all those things, and then whatever it is that you want to decorate with. So we will go through these pieces here, obviously step by step. Like I said, Dime Press does a really, really amazing job with their um, instructions. So it's nice to follow along. I generally follow them as I do the video for you guys. That way, when you get at home, if there are any questions you have, you know, going back and forth, hopefully you can refer to them easily that way. So... We have those. Excuse me. It also comes with two adhesive sheets, the new sticky sheets that Diamond Press has created with some info for them on how to use that and also the plastic card that I left over here. And this card helps you apply the little gray dots to the back of your die cuts if you want to use those. So that's info there for you on how to use them. And Excuse me. And if I have a chance to use them today, I'll try to work them in. Um, it comes with some clear acetate, the metal shim that you need for cutting clear acetate, which I love this. I have several of them from other kits, and they are well used and well loved and warped, and they keep cutting. So always keep your metal shim, even if it looks a little funky. It does come with a marquee cutting folder. Of course, it's for the marquee, and these dies will go into any machine that cut thin metal dies. You have your dimensional adhesive that they show you. Your dimensional adhesive that, as you saw in the instruction, we will be using. So we have those. Again, if you run out of these, you have, I'm sure, others in your stash. They're your typical... 3D adhesive foam adhesive. Uh, let's see. Let's look at these guys. Oh my gosh, look how many sentiments there are on here. You're like this typewriter, of course, like we said, you know. Uh, or, you know, making memories I felt for you instantly. Focus on the good stuff. It's your birthday, vintage and cool. Thanks for being part of the, my story. Click, clicky clack, you're all that. <laughs> Hello, love, smile, thanks. I mean, there's just a ton of words and sentiments. I love the color on this. Very cute. And these are our main guys. So, you know, if you have the little Polaroid or your typing paper, you're not old. And then, you know, however you want to fish that up. Are you a camera? You know, because uh, you have <laughs> the things, because every time I look at you, I smile. Cute. You know, ways to finish that off. Your typewriter and your Polaroid. And... I am sorry I'm pausing so much. I have allergies today. It's some blustery out there, so yeah. <laughs> so uh, this guy's like three and a quarter inches by almost three. Um, the little typewriter, oh my gosh, the typewriter is so cute, is 
like three and a half with the handle there and then you know the other pieces this guy is going to make like a topper for your a2 size card so metal to metal it is five and a quarter by uh, four so it's gonna be a little bit smaller than five and a quarter by four right uh, great for a2 size so you guys we are just gonna get to it um, I'll, I'll still grab my phone try to pull it up just so you can see some of the images but it's super cute and um, can't wait to try it out so I will be right back so just know this month uh, Diane Press or this craft show craft day they brought two auto ships the flower market one the one that does dyes and stencils and then this guy that's interactive so um, that's the first one that we're talking about right now look at they mix and matched in with the tackle box set on that one very cute and so here's some of the future ones so rain or shine hopefully you can see there's like rainbows and things there's your um, Halloween with a little graveyard <laughs> super cute ho ho hello um, in September oh, look at the little reindeer I mean he is just adorable uh, happy mail so more of an everyday kind of but love kind of related one Easter magic I mean you guys and do not let this go. I know <laughs> sometimes the auto ship sell out. I'm like, no, because I like to order it myself because I want to get an auto ship myself. So um, the cats out of the bag is the last one with the little cats and doggies. Super cute. So looking forward to that. All right, let's get started. Yeah, you know, I got this pretty paper I have because it has like a mail kind of typewriter. I don't know, it's script, but the feel of it looked really pretty to me to, for the typewriter. But we want that top piece to be cut by the die right that plate so I'm going to go ahead and make a card base this is a two size paper I'm just going to cut it at five and a half inches on the 11 inch side and then score it at four and a quarter and I guess the accent pieces I'll try and do with you know things that coordinate with what I have going on here so that and if I make the pull tab black I would probably have to do something special to put the pool right but um, I think I'll just use white paper at that point uh, so we have that guy this guy I don't need to cut quite yet well I will but just a second so it's giving you some info here already um, but we're gonna check this out okay so interestingly enough it's saying uh, you know stamp cut and color the following pieces it says if you want to do two card fronts you might want to do that to make it sturdier and this paper is kind of like an artsy paper so I'll probably go ahead and do that so I'm gonna go ahead and get this cut out from this guy um, let me see here okay I do want you to notice that this die will cut the edges it just has these kind of funky things in here maybe they do something later but it's not really it's just lines you're going to choose are you doing portrait or landscape with your um, card I don't know if it's you know I assume you can do either one for either style um, your kit was designed to make both portrait and landscape cards place your slot die vertically or in the other H direction depending on what you want to do right uh, both styles of card are assembled in the same way with this in mind we will only be showing how to assemble the landscape card so what I'm trying to say is you don't have to just keep this vertical if you want. You can do this one landscape too or however, right? So, um, let's do, I'm just going to go portrait. Why not? So we're going to take that and then we need the piece that slides in there, which is over here. And I'm going to do two of these. So what I'm going to do is cut it from here first. And then I said I'm going to do portrait. So I want it this way. And I'm going to tape that down, but I'm also going to not <laughs> move that from when I go from here to the black paper because I want it to be exactly the same, right? So let's go ahead and do some washi. Now the diamond press washi is pretty tacky, like it'll really hold, so just know that. And I want that for this purpose because I really want this to stay <laughs> where I'm doing this. So I'm just going to tape that across there. I'm going to run this through to get this piece and then I'll do the same thing just pick it up and move it onto a black piece of paper again just to reinforce okay so I'm just gonna run this through and then I'll just pick this up as one piece like that and I'll run it through some black paper also okay I'll be right back so we have our card base I'll put it to the side that can go this guy and this guy so like I said look you can see there's like embossed areas I don't know if we're gonna need those later but they're there and it says just to glue these back to back so obviously this is gonna be my front this is the rough cut side and rough cut side and I'm just gonna glue those together 
again for reinforcement so that's perfect so let's do that and then I'll move on to cutting some of these other pieces okay so I'm just gonna put some glue here I'm gonna hold it down to make sure it is one and just around here just to reinforce that area too and making sure everything's pretty well lined up but also I'm gonna look at it on this side just to make sure that looks good because this side we'll be seeing okay I'm gonna hold that down and then we'll continue on you know cutting before we get everything else going okay so that is ready to go card base this doubled up and nice good to go uh, you're gonna want to cut out one of the clear acetate the treadmill as they're calling it and then one of the pull tab guide and two pull tabs so that's nice and sturdy so treadmill <laughs> pull tab guide and so the pull tab guide I believe is gonna be in the back and you're not gonna see it anyway so um, you know it can be whatever so I'll probably just run it through the same white paper I'm gonna use for the pull tab and this is just a scrap of paper I have here uh, and then what else do I need this guy yeah. and then we'll get to the typewriter or Polaroid whatever we're gonna use so we have this guy I need two of this one we're going to back them back together I need one of this guy and then the treadmill as they're calling it we're just going to take this it comes with acetate of course you can always get acetate from your stash um, let me see Ooh. wow this stuff is really cool <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was one thick one or a couple thick ones or how but that's what it is so that's why you're gonna want to cut it into this and I'll show you what that looks like um, just in case you're new to checking this stuff out. So I'll leave it like this. I don't know. Well, let's see. Is it better? Oh, that's better use of it in this other direction. Okay, so let's do this other direction. And I'm just going to trim that down. Oh, that's really cool. We're going to pop this on here. Make sure it didn't really move. And I'll just take this folder because it's here. But uh, run that through. If you have another type of die cutting machine, a lot of times they do come with a metal shim or just, you know, really get the pressure going on it so it'll cut through really well. <laughs> you hear that guy? And so it's going to do this. I'm telling you, you can cut into this hundreds of times. Like, it'll be fine. And then that's our treadmill. All right. Let me get the other ones cut and I'll be right back. So we have the guide, our two pull tabs treadmill and the card base now um, we don't really need our other portion for a minute so what I think I'm gonna do is go ahead and put the card together until we need to add our you know our decorative element here because I think this is all like steps before we actually go in and add these things right yeah so let's just follow along so I'm not doing this part yet but I do have my pull tabs times two of course we're gonna glue this together but I'll just do that when I guess we get there even though I can do it now <laughs> uh, yeah okay so let's bring these pieces back so with the treadmill it says fold backside to backside along all scored lines of treadmill uh, there's some little scored lines Sorry about that. So there's two little score lines and basically you're just going to tuck them away. I mean, I don't know if there's a front and a back to this because it's this transparent piece, but this is the back side is what they're showing. Basically the nice side is going to be in the front. So just push it through. So that obviously it's going to open up. Same thing with this one. Um, just turn those in so that it gets through the little slot you have there. And there you go. So, I mean, I can hold it the way it looks like in the image, but basically, you're just getting it through there. <laughs> okay, so that was step two. So step three says to use some really good, like, double-sided adhesive. So we're on the back side right now. We're going to put these pieces to the side. And we're just going to stick some double-sided adhesive on one side and get that together. So let me grab okay, some. Okay, so I grabbed some red liner tape. This is just some stuff I had in my stash, but, you know... It's plastic. You probably want something like this, something heavy duty, and it does tell you there like to use a very <laughs> strong double-sided adhesive. Uh, I am making my card so that it is portrait. Um, the instruction is showing you landscape, so just I guess you know you can keep that in mind. But it's a good thing I'm showing you this one because that one has the opposite direction. It's 
not any different kind of like it says in the instruction um, other than when you get to the orientation part of it right like where you want to put it so anyhow um, basically you're just going to glue these tab ends together okay so uh, I'll just grab a piece and you're going to turn this over right you're not putting it on this side because that doesn't it's not going to do anything for you you need to turn it over so that this can go on here and I'll probably put a couple of pieces because this is kind of a thinner tape that I have here and I suppose if you're using liner tape that has a cover you probably, probably could put this on before you've threaded it through right because it's already on here it's covered it's not going to stick to anything you could put it on thread it through and then take the backs off but we're doing it this other way <laughs> so I was just following along with the instruction but definitely if I had read ahead I would have placed this first and then just thread it through it's only on the one side anyway okay so something like that really push that down and then take the little backings off it should come off pretty easily if you burnished it down because it wants to stick to the plastic and not to the carrier right so let's just get this off of here I'm being patient with it I don't use this stuff very often for a reason there we go all right so I'm gonna put that down and you're just gonna bring this guy over and stick them together so I'll kind of make sure this one side's overlapping so I can get it straight across that's pretty good I'm gonna give it a little zhuzh with this just in case I don't know <laughs> I just want to make sure it's really sticking together I have a little bit of extra bit on this side I'm gonna cut that off I don't need that causing problems for me later and I was talking about the adhesive not the plastic itself so now it's it moves there okay that's your treadmill and that was step three so step four says fold front side to front side along both score lines of pull tab guide so this we're gonna be working with this we're gonna need some more of this adhesive in just a moment so um, so we have this guy and it just says fold front side to front side this is the rough cut side this is the front so I'm gonna do what it said apply adhesive to back side the reason I'm telling you to fold it so that you only put the glue where you need it to be, right? Um, so we'll do that in just a second. And let me see. Center pull tab guide above for camera or below for typewriter slots on front, on back side of card front. So basically, if mine's going to be like this, and I have some writing on here, so I want that facing the right way. For the camera, if you're doing the camera, you'd want this pull tab to be up top and for the typewriter you want it to be at the bottom now if you're doing landscape same thing pull tab up here or not pull tab sorry the guide up here and then for typewriter down at the bottom so I, I'm gonna do the typewriter so I'm gonna put it down at the bottom and I'm gonna do it just like the way they're showing so I'm gonna turn it over again knowing that my writing this is uh, the top is here the bottom is here I'm going to put glue just on that area this little area right here right not on the tabs because we're going to use those later and it says just to center it so I'm eyeballing this part <laughs> and you know I have these marks that are here so I'm going to place that there and about here that looks like it's pretty close to there okay and I'm just going to hold that I'm going to hold that for a second but I'm also going to go ahead and stick these two together so in the next step in step five you are going to glue these guys together so I'm going to do that and have those ready for the next step okay Put the glue give it a zhuzh so it becomes one that's wrong side to wrong side so you're only seeing nice sides and I'll let that set up and I'll be right back so I'm gonna put my card base to the side we're working on this still I'm gonna put that to the side for a moment because on this I'm just gonna going to go ahead and put the word pull I want to see where that needs to be though so let's see okay so it's gonna be on that little clear end okay so if you look at your pull tab you'll see that it has well I guess that's the other thing they're telling you to wait a little bit because maybe you're gonna cut it off anyway so let's just wait we don't have to stamp that part yet so this is doubled up it has like a little notch here I don't know if you can see that that's gonna be important because we're gonna need the notch to be 
in the right place okay so um, let's see here uh, in step five we just finished step four step five saying to put these together it says to apply a strong adhesive to the treadmill as shown in red align notches of one pull tab piece with tabs of treadmill then adhere and place face down make sure long end of pull tab is placed over pull tab guide fold over tabs of treadmill and adhere to backside of pull tab so I just read you the words and we're gonna do that so I know I said a lot of things I just read this to you and again I'm doing the typewriter you have the pictures for this and the other orientation so where you have those little divots you're basically sticking this to those divots so it's really easy I mean if you're doing it facing into the guide if you're doing it the opposite direction face it into the guide the long piece needs to face into the guide and then these little pieces will notch in there so um, again just taking some strong craft tape we're going to apply it across here a little bit more because I got that a little short across here and what's so interesting about this is <laughs> it doesn't matter where this is as long as the long end of this is in this guide you're going to just adhere this to that little notch area right where the notch is just bring it over so I'm just going to take the carriers off again I need to burnish that really well so I mean this could be up here it could be down here it doesn't matter you're just <laughs> taking the notches and making sure they're in there so I'm just going to take this off I know for a lot of us reading instructions like oh, okay what <laughs> so we want to see it and so I'm trying to make it very clear notches I'm going to line them up right in here it's gonna hold on and then just bring this over and just grab onto that and I'm gonna really burnish that because I do not want that to come loose so I'm just getting that tight in there I come in here with this and really just give it a good squishing <laughs> okay so that's what it looks like right now and you can imagine see it works right pulling okay so it doesn't really matter where that is as long as those notches touch each other and um, at this point you're just going to basically cover up the top so that was step five and then step six oh, okay oh my gosh you guys I'm sorry and I'm not gonna go back and edit that because it's gonna take too much but <laughs> You're supposed to just use the one pull tab and then glue the other one on top. So we have two, you know, pull tabs. I'm just going to cut another one out. No big deal. It's just going to be a little extra thick, but that should be okay. So I'm just going to cut one more, okay? Sorry about that, guys. You didn't have to double this up yet. You could have just done the one and then put the second one on top. Keep that in mind. There's just no editing that, and I'm not going to do it. So I'm just going to cut one more in white paper, and I'll be right back. Well, you know, if you want super duper sturdy, that's fine. But here we go. So now we have a clean one, which is really great because it's going to sandwich this and it's going to keep it really, really nicely secured, right? So wonderful. Even better. <laughs> so mine's going to be a little bit extra thick, uh, but that's okay. So anyhow, let's go ahead and get this guy going. If you want to use your really grippy tape, go for it. Remember the little notches are down here, so I'm just going to line this up. And that would sandwich that for you, and that's going to really keep everything nice and secure for you, which is awesome. I know, I was thinking, I'm like, I could probably edit where I sandwich them together, but it's okay. <laughs> We're not going to do that. I don't want any confusion. Uh, more than what I already might have confused. Okay, so there we go. Um, so here we are, and then now we're just basically on step seven, which is just to fold these guys over, and you know, as we've seen in other diamond press, like slidey kind of things, glue one over the other. And, you know, the fact that this is three thick instead of just too thick is not going to matter because this is what's going to keep it in you know going up and down so it's accounting for itself already so I'm going to put glue here okay just on the one tab and then bring this guy over and it's just there to keep it in line right so as I hold it I'm just going to make sure everything's good yep so I will hold that tab down making sure you're not gluing it to this guy and we should be good uh, yeah step eight says make sure pull tab is in the up position for typewriter or down position for camera then apply a strip of strong double-sided tape to treadmill as shown in red so we're gonna do that in just a minute because now we're going to go into if you have a little you know whatever is the paper or the picture whatever it is that you're using for your typewriter or your camera is going to come into play now and that's 
we're done here. It says make sure it works. Yes, everything works. Great. We're going to turn it over. This is our nice side of our paper. This is the top of my card, the bottom. And so we're going to pull like this. And when you pull it, the paper comes up out of the typewriter, okay? So, again, we can type, not type. <laughs> well, I guess you could, but uh, we can uh, go ahead and press pull or um, stamp that, should I say. Um, it, but it does say to make sure that it is um, in the up position for the typewriter, right? When we go to adhere our page. And uh, for the camera in the down position. So just pay attention to that okay but I will be right back so I'm going to see what it is that we're going to put on our paper okay. so I'm gonna grab this so at this point I'm going to go ahead and do my little paper and do my um, typewriter and you know I just got a question and I don't know if I answered it yet because you know between sometimes doing things I'll take a little break or whatever and um, somebody had asked if if she got it right what I said as far as the die and press inks being alcohol uh, ink compatible, you know, kind of thing. And, um, and yes, because they're water-based. So with if you, if you use a water-based ink, you can come in with alcohol ink markers. It's not going to reactivate. But if you come in with water-based markers, it's going to reactivate and it's going to move around, right? The color is going to migrate. If you want to work with water-based things, you need something that's a little bit inkier, like a archival or like something. It's like, I don't even know if it's oil. I want to say oil, but pigment-based, I guess. I don't know what it is, but there's something different about it that lets you work with water-based um, markers, right? So, yes, if you're using diamond press inks, which I'll do right now so you can see, um, you can use alcohol ink markers. So, okay, we have that. We also have our paper. I'm leaving some space because I don't know how big the die is. I mean, I can check, but I'm sure it leaves a little bit of an edge. Let me get some black ink. And we will go from there. So, midnight. You don't have to stamp both these things at the same time if that makes you nervous. Um, hopefully, I didn't leave a, an air bubble there. If there's an air bubble like under one like this, it's going to touch your paper in that very center just because it's kind of like bubbled up. So just know that <laughs> I might even touch it right now see not too bad okay um, so let's do that again I'll try to just get on the very edges of this one did I ink up the corner okay good all right Ooh, I got a little bit there but that's okay um, again if you have a wide area and you have a bubble that bubbles getting closer to your paper right so just know that uh, let me clean this up I'm going to go ahead and put my um, sentiment whatever is I want to put inside my little paper here and I'll be right back so I will say this needs to orient this way right not landscape but portrait like just like if you're typing in a typewriter right your paper goes in eight and a half by eleven <laughs> so um, let's do clickety clack you're all that I think that's Funny. I don't know how high up this comes, so I'm going to put this guy right here. Ish, maybe towards the top. And we'll go ahead and type that, or not type that, but color it in or stamp it. Oh my goodness, in <laughs> this smoky color. So it's kind of a gray. Cute. Click the clack, you're all that. And then. Maybe do one of the little heart emojis. There's like little stars and other cute little things that you can kind of add. So there's XOXO, which is very cute. Uh, let's do that. And then let's do a little heart. And I don't really need the heart to be put on this thing, but that's okay. Maybe I'll put it right here. There we go. Like I don't need a stamp positioner for that, but it's already here. So let me grab a red ink and I'll be right back. Okay. Bright red, it looks like. Okay, let's get that guy. little cutie all right um, I'm gonna take this off and grab some inks to color this guy in with some alcohol ink markers and I'll be right back okay guys so I grabbed some markers you know you have your inspo sheet you can look and see what you might want to color or how or where but of course it's whatever you like alcohol ink markers uh, water-based um, ink 
you know, so it works out really well. I'll probably just go in and kind of color all these little guys in. And I'm not going to do too much. This is just one gray marker, and I'm just going to color these guys in gray. I don't think I'm going to come back in and, like, accent them in any way. So I'll color all those guys in. Anything else that I think needs to be kind of gray. You know, I did bring out a medium gray, so maybe for this I'll add a little accent, a little more in there. You know, the areas that are larger that I can do that with, like all in here. I love my typewriters. You guys know I have vintage typewriters, and they are so cute. Um, just beautiful. So just kind of color in there. Whatever I think needs to be silvery. Um, I grabbed some yellow, just, you know, maybe this is like a golden placard, I don't know, something like that. Maybe we add a little more in some other spots. Um, and then I grabbed coral inks for my actual typewriter. And so I'm just going to come in maybe with a darker one, just in some of the areas like that. And come back through with like the lighter one and just color it in. You guys know I just believe in adding color. I'm not really trying to make it look exactly <laughs> lifelike, but something like that. Right and here. Okay. And I'll come back once this is ready, but you can see I pretty much have colored <laughs> most of what needs to be colored already. Um, but I'll be back. Okay, guys. So, I did make my ribbon as dark as I could, a little black ribbon, because it typed in black. Okay, it typed in red, too, but that's okay. <laughs> um, all right, so let's get our pieces here. Again, you know, the Polaroid can definitely do a little image. You can um, cut a picture. It does have two different things. It has like the film part or the outer portion and then the little picture of film, should I say. Um, okay, so with this guy, again, I'm just going to put it on here and I'm eyeballing this. No big deal on that. I'll probably put another piece of tape up here. This guy, you know, it has areas that you can kind of see through so you have an idea of where you're cutting. I can see those little marks there. I can see our little return bar there. Let's see. Yeah, that looks good right there. So I'm going to tape that down and run them through, and I'll be right back. Hey, guys. So again, eyeballing. Oh, my gosh. How cute. And that is perfect. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. I didn't even know that part was going to cut away. Um, I just colored it black because I figured, I think that's called a platen, is black. So I just colored it in as dark as I could. But this is going to come in and out of here. So let me clean up, and we're going to pull this okay. guy together. We're going to bring back our card base. We're going to use that in just a minute. We have this guy again. Um, this is the top of my card, bottom, and here we go. It says for the uh, typewriter, it needs to be in the up position. So, okay. So, even though this looks long, it, that's the up position, meaning up, like not pull down, up, okay? Um, yeah. <laughs> it's just I'm trying to psych myself up to thinking, okay, that's correct. And right here, we're going to put more of the double-sided tape, which I put away because I thought I was done with it. So, let me grab that. Really cute, guys. I'm sorry I had that little hiccup. It actually didn't really cause any kind of a problem, but, you know, just wanted to let you guys know. You don't have to have three pieces. Two's good. Um, so across here, we're going to put some of our liner tape, and basically it's in that position, and I'm supposed to put this... I'm going to kind of smash that a little bit right down at the base here. So I'm going to put two strips because this stuff is pretty thin. If you have a thicker one, probably one thick piece will be just fine. So I'm going to put a little bit there. And one more little strip above that or on there. Just right with it again, just because it's pretty thin. Okay. And then it says to line this guy up. Adhere photo or paper on your treadmill as shown. And they're showing you to put it right at the base, right? So right here. So I'm going to do that. So that's already in that position, so when you pull it, it comes out of your <laughs> little guy that is so cute. Okay, so that is step eight. And step nine says apply adhe adhesive foam just the way they're showing you. Uh, you may wish to cut some of your foam dots in half. Um, slide typewriter or camera over paper or photo inserting it here, right? So 
those areas that got cut out that look really cute, you can kind of thread it in there so it looks more lifelike, right? So I'm going to copy exactly what they showed me here. So I'm going to turn this guy over. I'm going to take our foam dots and I'm doing exactly what they're showing. So there's like one here and one here and some are cut in half. Nothing here because your paper is going to probably slide out in and out from there. They're showing a full one here and a full one on this side and then just half dots all here and here. Okay, so for that I'm just taking a scissor and I do this all the time with adhesives so just cut it in half. No big deal. And I'll do just what they're showing there. It's kind of up in this area right on the edge and this one's right along the other edge and so I'll cut a couple more in half and just orient them exactly as they're showing okay so there's a couple more bits right on the very top okay guys so I did a little oopsie but it's okay I recovered um I put it all the way down here because in the picture they're showing you for it to be down here but that's if you're doing landscape if you're doing portrait like, like I am all you want to do is make sure okay I have exactly where they showed all these bits to be I had to reposition it so I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on this guys just because um I had stuck it down initially and now I need to re-stick it in a different way. But anyhow, so you have this. I stuck them exactly how they're showing, right? Don't pay attention to that little black X. I was like, oh no, I messed up, but that was my bad. So we have that half, half, half all up here, okay? And this is in the up position. So when you go to bring it in, you're going to bring this in so that you're clearing the um, little, your treadmill, right? So, you know. For me right now, I want it to go into here, to thread it into this area. So pass through here, but coming in through here. So just in here. And I mean, you can leave it maybe there, I would say. I don't know, maybe a little bit lower. Wherever it is you want, but do not touch the treadmill with, the, with your foam. So if I'm paying attention, the foam is not touching there. So that's where I'm going to put my little typewriter so that it's not touching the treadmill. You do not want it touching that at all. I'm not going to push down yet because what I want to do is test it. Look at that, you guys. Okay, so that works. Do not push down until you know that you're not touching that plastic. Um, for this one, you do have to judge that. For this other one, you're basically going to just kind of line it up and it'll work for you because you don't have to judge how high up, you know, it's basically at the edge of your uh, card. For this one, you do want to look at that and then go ahead and stick it down and you guys oh my gosh how cute so we're just going to adhere this to our card base i'm going to stamp the pull or the little arrow whatever you want i'll be right hey back guys, i still can't get over how cute this is okay so i'm going to pull this down i'm going to stamp our wording there and not a lot of color i mean it just came together so well so cute really happy with this and uh okay i already have it in front of me i was looking for that <laughs> and uh you have a little arrow and i think you have the word pull if i yeah it's right here <laughs> which i'm going to use because it looks like it was typewritten that's really cute so let's go with that and again i'm just going to go for it but you could have done this prior to putting it in here um i think doing it now is probably better though but now that we see this and you have an idea you know that it can just be stamped at the very base and that's good so again i just wait to make sure it's making contact everywhere very cute there you go and so what we're going to do on this back side is go ahead and put our dimensionals so that this is up off your card base now to be honest it probably they can probably still pull it while it's just flat like this on there but you need clearance for this right so Again, once you're out of the dimensionals that this comes with, they are literally just dimensionals that you would have in your stash. You know, any dimensional that you have will work. Okay? So, again, I like to copy what they're showing, and then after that, I'll pretty much have in mind what I need to do. But basically what they're saying is put one under the guard, or on top of the guard, should I say, on top of this little area, and then along the sides, right? So you don't want to... Um, stop this from working so just along the sides some sturdiness and I'm making this up because clearly the pictures are for the other orientation but just up and down right so we're giving it some uh, support there right and then maybe up here I'll just put like now actually let me see because when we pull this does this move it goes down okay 
so I can put another one right here. Let me take the carriers off and then I'll show you exactly what I did. Well, I'll show you now. So you see this kind of like a little triangle of them here, some there, one right on the guide, and then these guys. Okay guys, so all the carriers are off and there you go. Super cute. Oh my goodness. Clicky clack, you're all that. Okay, card base. Make sure it's opening the right direction. And then this just sits right on top of me. You can do another base layer. It looks to me like this piece is five, like four by five and a quarter. So if you want to do a matte layer behind it that's, you know, four and eighths, five and three eighths, or just a full one, you can definitely do that. But I like the black starkness of that. I think it looks really cute. So there you go. Hopefully that helps you out. Um, again, walking through, you know, read these guys, and um, you'll you'll be good to go. I mean, how cute. Um, what they're showing here is that it might be a little bit long, so if you, it is kind of sticking out a little too much, just cut the excess off and then do your pull there, okay? That's kind of what they're showing there. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks so much, Diamond Press for sending these items for review. If you think I have missed doing a tutorial for, you know, one of the new items that you might have seen in the previews or in Diamond Press's email blast, I assure you I have not to go check them out. Uh, by Tuesday, they will all be launched. I think I just have a handful left to um, release to y'all. But check them out. Uh, you can go to my channel, and I'll have, you know, they'll be there um, if, just in case you miss one or two because I know whenever I start releasing several in a day youtube just kind of doesn't want to tell you about it anymore so <laughs> you can go check those out a super cute auto ship i'm really excited about it um thanks for watching guys i will have the links there i'll have images coming up and i'll see you all at the next one bye now